Once again, another awesome attraction was within walking distance, Marengar Fort. So off we walked. Even the pre-actual attraction area seemed grand and engrossing. Here is some evidence of an attack hundreds of years ago that resulted in, well, nothing, because this fort is impervious to siege. There were great views of Jodhpur below us at every turn. And there were other awesome views when looking up as well. Wow. Already incredibly impressive. Uh, on the way in, we saw cannonball marks and other evidence of attacks that were documented via this virtual tour, of course. But uh, no one has ever managed to breach this big, big fort. And you can see why it's like 40 feet thick. <laughs> The run up to the main doors just around this corner was in the same grand scale, and I could feel hundreds of years of stories and events steeped into this structure. I hadn't even considered the use of elephants with a battalion siege in these times. These spikes are there to prevent elephant charging. People used to ride up around here on elephants and try to charge it. So this right angle means they couldn't get enough speed and those spikes were so that the elephants could not be forced to charge. Inside was full of stories as well. The grid here are the handprints of 31 wives who all sacrificed themselves by being burned alive on the funeral pyre of their husbands who died in war or some other honorable way. This practice is called sati and it continued as a typical practice until the late 1800s. This is giving me a very where the wild things are vibe. How about you? The ones that were open were for male nobility, and the ones that were covered with cloth were for women to protect them from the dangers of the male lustful gaze. Should it have been the other way around? Nowadays on public transit, she really only could use a hoodie and headphones, so we unfortunately haven't come that far. Here is just the start of a whole lot of weaponry you can see. This is a set of women's dumbbells for strength and agility training. So if a lustful gaze of a man did make it through, Perhaps they could uh, beat the face that was housing, said Gaze. This is an idol of the god Gangwa. One room featured extensive pieces of Marwar miniature paintings. Some brushes used to create the intricate details of each painting was only one hair thick. Beauty everywhere, including this Shish Mahal mirrored room. It was here, at this point of the tour, that I realized that things were getting intense.
Views and carved screens galore, each a unique pattern and enthralling when you imagine how much work went into this. This is a type of dagger that is a double-sided blade on the outside and on the inside another dagger so that when you plunge it into an effort, it springs open and pretty much uh, ninja blenders his innards. India. These guns used for murdering people are beautiful. Regular old daggers with just normal bone fashioned or leather wrapped handles getting you down? Try dagger on a stick. Dagger on a stick. It's a big, horrible, murderous, pointy thing on a stick. And this Fool Mahal room that was a private spot for a prince to chill with his shiny balls was sure a sight to behold. And just look at this narrow hall overlooking the carved screens and raised courtyard. To the right, displays of royal bassinets in varying degrees of dizzying workmanship. Okay, 
So at the end of the tour of Merengar Fort here, um, lots of good impressions, it's okay. Um, first of all, rich royal history filled with eunuchs and bloodthirst and tents and palanquins and uh, shish mahals and colored glass and archways and hallways and view of the blue city. Um, the paint I learned is called chuna and it goes on top of the houses to repel insects and to help diffuse heat. Of course, India being India, had to fill it full of beautiful color with that blue, and that is why the city is blue, because they found a material that would help them uh, survive in the heat and also look fly as heck. Overheard at Moranga Fort. My God, I've got to use the wall shroom. And if there was any doubt that the walk on the way out would be boring. Wowzers. It's real. I checked. So these were the insertable cups of one of the princess's bras. You can imagine how hard she was to penetrate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll delete that. We'll delete no, that. we won't. If you exit this side, you will get to see a garden filled with beautiful species of indigenous tree. Apparently there's a whole bunch of species of tree and plant and animal here that uh, are hardly seen anywhere else. So let's see if we can see some awesome stuff. Look at that. India. Still beautiful, that's the update. A great wall surrounded the fort, ran down the hills, and snaked its way to meet at all the sides. We could hear the bell of a temple in the distance. If you see a sign that says take off your shoes, you're about to enter something very important or a very temple. Yeah. Or as we found out once we started shopping a bit more, a store. I wanted to let some of this footage just run so you can see the walk out and how the city buildings joined a lot of the fort buildings with a winding walkway. That's right, we still aren't even out yet.
city? This must be the back entrance now, what with the elephant deterring spikes also mounted here, no? We kept on walking through rows of blue buildings, vendors selling vegetables, motorcycles, tuk-tuks, and stray dogs. until the honking and sounds of a modern city grew and we ended up in this large intersection completing our exploration. Next up, we have more from the blue city of Jodhpur when we visit a ruins and monkey-filled garden. And Natalia gets a Rajputi makeover. I'm David for Vegan Everywhere. See you next time.